history of the world's largest sporting event goes back 80 years. And now, for the first time, the FIFA Soccer World Cup is being played on African soil. This is not the only first. In the 80-year history of the tournament, this is the first time that FIFA has recognised fine art as official licensed products. It's great that the concept the idea came from Africa. Um, I actually pitched FIFA with this concept through Global Brands, their master licensee about three years ago, um, to acquire a, a license to fine art for the World Cup. They were very excited by the idea and um, the project has gone so well and so successfully that we expect that um, it will affect the way that fine art licenses would be looked at in World Cups to come. More than 400 original artworks in four collections will go on auction in early July. One of the collections features the 32 national flags of the qualifying countries, each one signed by Nelson Mandela. The collection is entitled Africa Salutes You, a tribute to the former president for his role in bringing the World Cup to Africa. So without his intervention, I doubt whether it would have happened. So what it is is a tribute to him and includes a figure which has represented Mr Mandela bringing Africa to the World Cup and the World Cup to Africa. It's a collaborative effort between Athel Malt, who is an artist with a strong publishing background. We really did the basic structure and we conceptualised it. And the actual paintwork was painted by the children of Vezu. Now Vezu happens to be um, the part of the Eastern Cape Transcar where Mr Mandela was grown up, was born and uh, we, we're trying to create an upliftment of the area and creating some uh, upliftment of the community, so it's community projects of which get a percentage of the proceeds. The international collection features five artworks from each of the participating nations. What we thought is that the two things that really unify nations and give us a better understanding of the various cultures and the people would be sport and art. So having the five paintings from every qualifying country if I asked you, have you ever seen a Serbian artwork? You'd say probably not until today. Have you ever seen a Slovakian artwork? No, not until today. What have you ever seen anything from North Korea? And I doubt if you ever will, because you can't get in there, so it's impossible. So we now give South Africans or the world stage an opportunity to experience arts and culture of the participating countries. Brazilian football legend Pele, along with South African artist Athol Mult, has produced a series of original works depicting his rise from poverty to prodigy. The Pele project consists of um, a translation, interpretation, a visual interpretation of significant events that transpired in Pele's life. As he was from a young boy and how he started playing football. So we thought let's create a visual story of his life. Things that happened not only as a youngster when he started playing football, but when he was playing as a major footballer and some of the, the, the key things that he remembers that were really significant to him in his career. So we started off with the Four Peanuts one, which we said, how did you start playing football? And he said, look, we were a very poor family. And I had to go and pick up peanuts from the plantation. The trains were coming through and all the peanuts that had fallen off the trains. These were then collected and I took them to the circus to play to buy myself a football kit. So that was called Four Peanuts. And there's an original work that will go on sale with an estimate of between thirty to $50,000. The biggest of the collections is the African collection. 200 football-themed artworks produced by acclaimed African artists from nine nations. And it was also important, the first event of its kind, to be hosted on African soil. People needed to see the world doesn't know much about African art and the depth, the width and the extent of it. The organisers are positive. This initiative will catapult Africa's art industry even after the tournament is over. You've got four billion people focused on South Africa at this point. Um, we've created limited edition prints from the works in these collections. They're currently being exhibited at various venues internationally um, and in South Africa, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban, Sun City huge amounts, volumes of people are seeing the artwork and this exposes our artists, creates an interest in African art. You know, we come out of a, a, a post-apartheid uh, South Africa and I've always felt that to be a South African it must be a fully-fledged um, representation of all, all uh, nationalities. So we should see all the previous disadvantaged people and we do need to see a representation of, of black, black artists young coloured artists, young Indian artists and white artists standing together as one with their own cultural um, ideology 
but bringing it together as well. Bringing together 400 pieces of art from all over the world was no easy task. But from the Titanic response, organizers say it was well worth the effort.